if my younger brother Mho Kenyatta is guilty let the government deal with him i have no problem that statement from president huru kenyatta has sent shockwaves right across the country what is huru serious how do you even talk about your own brother your own blood brother like that and to make matters worse you're the elder brother elder brothers are supposed to look out for their younger brothers whatever happens in my view this is a reflection of the kenyan society it's a reflection of how low kenyans have sunk i will give you a story yeah my political lecturer had a younger brother the younger brother was the headmaster of a certain school yeah somewhere in shags and as a headmaster you handle finances yeah i believe the situation is still the same today you handle a lot of finances especially in a school up country somewhere in shags and so what happened my political lecturer's younger brother was caught with his hand in the cookie jar there was some money missing and action was taken against him now i'm sure as the man was being picked up by police being arrested he was telling the policeman you're wasting your time i will not spend any time even in police cells i'll be released immediately you're going to see he was probably thinking that because his brother my political lecturer was a very senior police officer nothing was going to happen to him after all this is kenya yeah and we know the way things work even to this day the people behind bars are not all criminals yeah most of the people who are behind bars and may be criminals are there because they did not know enough people and so my political lecturer's mother rushes to him and tells him your younger brother has been arrested can you please sort it out my political lecturer responds how how do i sort this out he's been uh, arrested for criminal offense let justice take its course his mother tells him get serious this is your younger brother my political lecturer responds i took an oath of office and the oath i took was to arrest criminals the oath i took i'm not supposed to block criminals from being brought before justice that would be going against my oath if i go against my oath of office then uh, i'll be in trouble going against my oath of office will not only affect me but it'll affect my children now as much as i love you as my mother and as much as i love my younger brother there's nothing i can do my hands are tied and so my poor uncle went to jail he was jailed i believe for 7 years and he never ever forgave my political lecturer he never forgave his brother you could see the venom and the hatred coming out of him all his life even as we were growing up we could see it very clearly and even in death when my political lecturer had already passed on <laughs> this man made a very spirited attempt to rubbish his legacy completely rubbish his legacy but of course people like myself could not allow it and so it didn't happen now the reason why i'm telling you that story is to illustrate a very important point which kenyans seem to not see yeah at all when you take a oath of office yeah it doesn't matter whether it's oath of office to be president of the republic of kenya a oath to be a police officer a oath to be a soldier this is very serious business you are swearing to protect yeah you are swearing allegiance to the country called the republic of kenya and that means that you're not supposed to favor anybody even your mother let alone your brother soldiers are probably the people who know how serious something called an oath is because a soldier takes an oath to protect their country yeah he takes an oath in protecting their country to follow orders from their superiors and therefore if a soldier is ordered yeah to go into a village 
uh, where some uh, terrorists are hiding and that soldier goes into that village and that is his own home village and his mother is there yeah and is ordered by superior to shoot they will shoot without hesitation their oath demands demands that they do that yeah shame on you kenyans for taking oaths so casually anyway now i learned this when i was very young but it, it did not really sink in yeah but later in life when i learned a lot of things about the spiritual i began to understand things which were happening around me yeah things were, which were happening with families where the head of that family took a certain oath yeah an oath of office and then he did not fulfill that oath he went against it he did not serve according to that oath Now I appreciate the fact that uh, a lot of those people taking this channel do not believe in such a uh, mambo jumbo some may call it old wives tales yeah but I've seen with my own eyes you see families which have a hopeless drunkard a drug addict problems in the family you cannot explain these people are wealthy but they have issues very very serious issues and I'm not talking about the normal family issues Now my political lecturer was not a religious man. He never went to church, but at least he understood oaths. And I'm so grateful for that. Because let me have any other problems, but let me not have problems where I'm suffering for the sins of my father. When a president of the Republic of Kenya takes the oath of office, what does he lift? He lifts up a Bible if he's a Christian. and he lifts up the Quran if they are a muslim when you lift up let me just talk about the bible because that's what i know best okay when you lift up the bible and you invoke the name of almighty god ay 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 that is very serious business anyway Let's leave the mambo jumbo <laughs> as some of you would like to call it and let's get into the politics. Now the very important thing to note here is maybe we need to start by asking a question. Where did this sugar manenos come from? Yeah? Who was the whistle blower as far as this sugar maneno is concerned? It was a man called Fred Matiangi. In retrospect, we can now be sure of one thing. This was a well coordinated move by the government. Okay? Despite what Kimunya told us that CS Matiang is very inexperienced and that is showing his inexperience by releasing such alarming information to the public. Despite what Kimunya said, yeah, the truth is looking back now that this must have been a very well choreographed move by the government. And what was the government after? What was the end game? The end game was to nail some people involved in sugar importation now if you've stolen from a bank and somebody else has also stolen from the same bank yeah and you want to finish them off yeah you don't blow the whistle on them when you know you have also stolen it's just common sense why because the investigations of that other person you want to nail will inevitably lead back to your own theft indeed even if it does not happen like that what will happen is that the people you're trying to get prosecuted will blow the whistle on you yeah they'll know that you're responsible for their troubles and they'll say you're calling me a thief so and so is also a thief and here's the evidence they stole before we stole so it would make absolutely no sense for you to blow the whistle on somebody when you know you're you're involved or people close to you are involved and indeed the evidence of the ground proves this yeah mo kinyata is partner of a certain mzungu in a company as i've revealed in an earlier recording yeah that is in the list of sugar importers into the country however his company was not anywhere near the sugar importation which is being uh, targeted at this time He was nowhere near those sugar importations that company did not import sugar at that time 
The company has imported sugar in the past, but it did not import sugar at this particular time. And the issues, yeah, poisonous sugar, sugar which is, uh, you know, infested with all kinds of impurities that uh, may be harmful to the human being, yeah. All this, uh, this particular case, this particular sugar manenos, do not involve Wanamoho, yeah. And uh, there's no way it can be linked to it. It is possible, of course, to stand up in parliament and uh, name him, yeah and claim that he's being protected, yeah, because see, you're going to achieve your objective. You're going to make the headlines. You're going to confuse the public. The public are going to look up and realize, hey, you mean even the president's uh, people are involved in this? Therefore, so-and-so is not guilty. Or if so-and-so is guilty, then also the president's uh, people should be prosecuted. You will win a major propaganda war. But unfortunately, propaganda does not win court cases. What wins court cases is solid evidence. So when the president said, I've had my brother's uh, name mentioned, and uh, I have confidence in the government organs, yeah, they can go ahead and arrest him and deal with him. If he is guilty, he knew what he was saying. He knew his brother is not guilty. But there was a blunder here. And the blunder came from D.P. Ruto's side. By mentioning the name of Mho, yeah, they won a major propaganda war. Yeah? But this win is very temporary, extremely temporary. But where the blunder comes in is that they allowed the president to make the statement he made. And therefore, tomorrow, if the deputy president is accused yeah, of something like this, the president will have the moral advantage and the moral high ground because people will say this man was prepared even for his brother to be arrested and jailed so what is wrong with the arresting and jailing his deputy president in my view it was a huge blunder dragging in Moho Kenyatta's name into this sugar manenos very huge blunder it's a huge blunder because it sets the stage to what could happen next Please take careful note of my choice of words. Yeah, What could happen next? I've not said what must happen next or what will happen next. I said what could. Kuna wezekano. Inaezekana itafanyika. And so, if that situation happens, well, the president is covered. Yeah? He doesn't even need to say it. People will say the president was willing for his own brother to be investigated. So who is the deputy president? Folks, it's very possible that this was a trap which was laid. Yeah? It was bait. It was a hook. Yeah? And some people, yeah, some fish, bit on that bait. Yeah? Bit on the hook. And now it is hooked. Or to use Kenyan language, imeshikwa. Folks, make no mistake about it. This is a very high stakes drama, very high stakes. Because if the government was willing yeah, to release such sensitive information, yeah, was willing to risk so many things by telling Kenyans there's poisonous sugar in the market, <laughs> what that tells you is that there's a much, much more important objective as far as the government is concerned than causing panic amongst the public. Now that is so important, I have to repeat it. The fact that things unfolded the way they did means only one thing. That there was a much bigger objective, something much more important, yeah, that uh, was so important, yeah, that the government could afford to ignore, causing panic amongst the Kenyan public, causing panic amongst people who would want to visit Kenya, including tourists who are bringing in foreign exchange, much-needed foreign exchange, etc., etc. This is a very, very high-stakes game, if we can call it a game. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. Music